Welcome to another Hero Pack Focus Champions. I'm JP from Northern Lights over Arkham, and this time I will be overviewing the Hulk Hero Pack. I will be going over the new player cards that come in this Hero Pack, so stick around to find out if you should get this hero into your collection. Let's get started. Hulk is the sixth hero pack to come out for Marvel Champions card game. Let's look at what signature cards Hulk has first. The alter ego side is Bruce Banner. He has a recovery value of 4 and has the genius and scientist traits. His hand size is 5 cards and he has 18 hit points. His special ability is experimental research, action. Draw one card, choose and discard one card from your hand, limit once per round. Bruce Banner's recovery is decent and his ability can be used sometimes when you happen to have some useless cards in your hand so that you can try and fish for a better card for that turn to play. His hand size is only 5, which is a bit low compared to many of the other alter egos. Next, let's look at the hero side. Hulk has a thwart of 0, an attack value of 3 and a defense value of 3. His traits are Avenger and Gamma. Hulk has a hand size of 4 cards and 18 hit points. His hero ability is Enrage. Forced interrupt when you turn ends, discard your hand. Hulk is clearly a strong attacker and a defender, but can't work without the help of other play cards. His hero ability isn't a ability but a penalty. You can't hold on to useful cards that could help you out in the villain phase, so you should always try to play his whole hand no matter what cards are in it, as the leftover cards have to be discarded at the end of your turn before drawing new cards. You can save some cards by flipping back to Alter Ego though. The big negative for Hulk is his slow hand size of 4 that really limits how much you can do in a single turn with Hulk. Let's look at Crushing Blow next. Crushing Blow is a one cost event. It has the attack trait. You can only spend physical resources to pay for this card. Hero action, attack. Deal damage to an enemy equal to your attack. Crushing Blow can be used as a physical resource. There are two copies of Crushing Blow in the deck. Crushing Blow can be really useful to get rid of a minion with the guard for example. It is cheap and usually can be played without any big trouble. The physical resource requirement for playing it can sometimes be a bit of a hindrance, but Hulk decks usually have plenty of physical resources to play cards with. Next we have Hulk Smash. Hulk Smash is a 3 cost event. It has the superpower trait. Hero Interrupt. When making a basic attack, you get plus 10 attack for this attack. If you paid for this card using only physical resources, the attack gains overkill. Hulk Smash can be used as a physical resource. There are two copies of Hulk Smash in the deck. Hulk Smash is one of the most iconic Hulk signature cards. It can be really powerful, and if you pay it with only physical resources, the overkill lets you smash through guard minions with ease and deal the excess damage to the villain. I have found this card to be really good, but sometimes the board situation can force you to not be able to play it. Next we have Suborbital Leap. Suborbital Leap is a 3 cost event. It has the superpower and 4 traits. Hero action, fourth. Remove three threat from a shim. Five threat instead if you paid for this card using only physical resources. Suborbital leap can be used as a physical resource. There are two copies of suborbital leap in the deck. Suborbital leap is the only way for Hulk to remove threat using his signature cards. I feel it's a bit costly for what it does, but I have found that it can really often hit the 5 threat 
removal as Hulk tends to have plenty of physical resources to play cards with. Next we have Thunderclap. Thunderclap is a 3 cost event. It has the superpower trait. Hero action. Choose up to 3 different enemies. Deal 3 damage to each of them. Thunderclap can be used as a physical resource. There are 2 copies of Thunderclap in the deck. Thunderclap feels a bit underwhelming compared to some of the other area of effect cards with a cost of 3 and hitting only 3 enemies. It does deal 3 damage to all those enemies every time, but still a cost of 3 feels a bit pricey. Next we have the Unstoppable Force. Unstoppable Force is a 2 cost event, hero action, ready hulk. If you paid for this card using only physical resources, draw one card. Unstoppable Force can be used as a physical resource. There are two copies of Unstoppable Force in the deck. Unstoppable Force lets you ready Hulk after you have defended in the villain phase to be able to attack in the next hero phase, or attack twice in the same hero phase if you already were ready at the start of your turn. This can be powerful if Hulk has his attack boosted by other cards. The cost feels about right for the effect of the card and drawing an extra card can be really helpful. Next we have Limitless Strength. Limitless Strength is a resource card with three physical resources. You can only play Limitless Strength in Hero form. There are two copies of Limitless Strength in the deck. Limitless Strength is a really important card in the Hulk hero set. Many of Hulk's events cost 3 resources and you get bonuses for paying them using only physical resources. There really isn't anything more to say about Limitless Strength. Next we have Banner's Laboratory. It's a 2 cost support card with the location trait. Bruce Banner gets plus 2 recovery, alter ego resource, exhaust Banner's Laboratory generate a mental resource. Banner's Laboratory can be used as a mental resource. Banner's Laboratory lets you build a strong recovery engine for Hulk, so that you don't need to spend long times in Alter Ego and also boosts your ability to play cards in Alter Ego for setting up all the upgrades and support cards Hulk needs. Next we have Boundless Rage. It's a one cost upgrade with the condition and gamma traits. Hero form only. Hulk gets plus one attack. Force response. After you change form, discard this card. Boundless range can be used as a physical resource. Boundless range can be used to build Hulk's base attack value up and works really well when playing aggression to have really strong turns hitting enemies with basic attacks. You need to consider when playing it as you will have to discard it when you go back to Alter Ego form. And last we have Immovable Object. It's a 3 cost upgrade with the condition trait. You get plus 4 hit points, Hulk gains Retaliate 1. Immovable Object can be used as a physical resource. This is one of the best cards in the Hulk set in my opinion. Retaliate 1 gives so much damage output to remove pesky tough status cards and piles damage onto the villain over time if you get this onto the table early on. It's costly but well worth the free resource cost. Next, let's look at Hulk's Obligation and Nemesis cards. Hulk's Obligation is Inner Demons. Give to the Bruce Banner player, change form, Flip your identity, then, if you are Bruce Banner, discard two cards from your hand, discard this obligation. If you are Hulk, exhaust your hero, discard this obligation. Inner Demons has three boost icons. Inner Demons is different to earlier obligation in that you can't get rid of it. It will always go into the encounter discard, no matter what you do. The obligation tends to ruin the best laid path plans quite often, at least for me. Next we have Hulk's Nemesis minion Abomination. Abomination has 2 seam, uh, 3 attack and 6 hit points. He has the elite and gamma traits. Force response. 
after Abomination attacks you, discard the top card of your deck. If a physical resource was discarded this way, take 2 damage. Abomination has 3 boost icons. The Nemesis side shim is total destruction. Threat cannot be removed from this shim while Abomination is in play. It has the extra encounter card symbol and comes in play with 2 threat per player. It has 3 boost icons. The Nemesis treachery is Clash of the Titans. When revealed, the enemy with the highest attack attacks the hero or ally with the highest attack. First player decides dies. If no attacks were made this way, this card gains surge. The Clash of Titans has 3 boost icons and there are 3 copies of Clash of the Titans in the Nemesis set. The Nemesis set really focuses around Abomination and attacking the strongest hero with the strongest enemy in play. The whole Nemesis set boosts the encounter deck with tons of boost icons and that can make for some real dangerous attacks by the villain. I think this Nemesis deck is really nasty. Lastly, let's look through the new aspect cards that come in the Hulk hero pack. Let's start with the Aggression Aspect cards, as Hulk comes with a pre-built Aggression deck. First we have Brawn. He is a 3-cost ally with 1 port, 1 attack and 5 hit points. He has the Champion and Gamma traits. Response after Brawn attacks, remove 1 threat from a sheep. Brawn can be used as a mental resource. Brawn brings some desperately needed working power into Aggression decks. I can see myself playing more aggression in true solo with the help of Brawn. Next, we have Sentry. He's a 4 cost ally with 2 port, 3 attack, and 5 hit points. He has the Avenger trait. Forced response after Sentry enters play under your control, deal yourself one encounter card. Sentry can be used as an energy resource. The penalty of dealing one encounter card is not as bad as it sounds as Sentry brings good forth and attack to the table and can be used 5 times before being defeated by consequential damage. Next we have another earlier hero turned ally, She-Hulk. She is a 4 cost ally with 2 port, 1 attack and 4 hit points. She has the Avenger and Gamma traits. She-Hulk gets plus one attack for each damage token here, meaning the She-Hulk ally card. She-Hulk can be used as a physical resource. She-Hulk can be a really strong hitter and usually it's a good plan to work with her for her first activation to build up her hitting power as she takes two consequential damage when warping. Next we have Drop Kick. It's a three cost event with the attack trait. Hero action attack. Deal 4 damage to an enemy. If you paid for this card using only physical resources, stun that enemy and draw one card. Dropkick can be used as a physical resource. This card deals decent amount of damage and can stun the enemy, but it's not that exciting. Unless you plan on building an aggression deck that focuses on stun locking the villain, I think this is not that of a good card. Next we have Toe to Toe. It's a one cost event with the attack trait. Hero action, attack. Choose an enemy. That enemy attacks you. Deal 5 damage to that enemy. Toe to Toe can be used as a mental resource. Toe to Toe is a cheap damage dealing card and if your hero can take the punch, it can be a really good addition to a high damage aggression. Next we have You'll Pay for That. It's a one cost event with the Thwart trait. Hero responds Thwart. After the villain attacks you, remove one threat from a sheen for each damage you took from that attack to a maximum of 5. You'll Pay for That can be used as an energy resource. This card brings so much added threat removal power to aggression that playing aggression through solo is finally starting to be more doable with higher difficulties. I really like this card. The last new aggression card is Martial Prowess. It's a 2 cost upgrade with the skill trait. Play under any player's control, max 1 per player. Resource 
exhaust martial prowess generate a physical resource for an attack event. Martial prowess can be used as a physical resource. At first I thought that this card could be really good, but the fact that you can only have one of these in play and you can only use it to generate a resource for an attack event is quite limiting. The first basic aspect card is to the rescue. It's a two cost event with a dwarf trait. Hero action dwarf, remove two threat from a sheep. To the rescue can be used as a physical resource. To the rescue is a decent threat removal card for aspects with not so good threat removal tools like aggression and protection. The second basic aspect card is resourceful. It's a one cost upgrade with the skill trait. Resourceful can be used as a wild resource. I'm still a bit unsure how I feel about this card. It could be good in a deck that tries to get as clean as possible by playing as many upgrades, allies and supports onto the table to cycle through the more powerful cards faster. But I still need to test this one out a bit more. The new Justice card is Beat Cop. It's a 3 cost support with the Persona trait. Action, Exhaust Beat Cop, move 1 threat from Machine to gear. Action, Exhaust and Discard Beat Cop, deal 1 damage to a minion for each threat here. Beat Cop can be used as a physical resource. I have not yet played with Beat Cop, but I feel that it's an okay card, but not as good as people at first thought. It's a bit expensive, and I feel like it's better in true solo than in multiplayer. The new leadership card is Inspiring Presence. It's a one cost event. Play only if your identity has the Avenger trait. Hero action, heal one damage from an ally and ready it. Inspiring Presence can be used as a mental resource. This card combos well with ally boost in decks like with the vision boost or the Iron Man ally boost decks. I really like this card. The last new card of the pack is the new protection aspect card, Electrostatic Armor. It's a one cost upgrade with the armor and tech traits. Play under any player's control, max one per player. Response, after you defend against an attack, deal one damage to the attacking character. Electrostatic armor can be used as an energy resource. I have not tried this card out yet, but it's basically the same effect as Retaliate, except you need to defend against an attack, or at least that's how I'm interpreting the card. I hope this overview helped you decide if you want to add Hulk to your collection. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about Hulk's hero pack cards. Again, thanks for watching and until next time.